So in the previous two videos, we looked at periodic trends or periodic table trends. And we said that uh, one trend is uh, electronegativity and one trend is size. Now when you look at the periodic table, electronegativity is definitely a horizontal trend. Electronegativity changes so this is going to be, um, well, let's get that right, low electronegativity and high electronegativity. On, on the left is low and on the right is high. And then, as it turns out, the size trend is a vertical trend. So this is, things are smaller up here, and then they get larger down here. So the question always comes up, what if I move diagonally on the periodic table? Well, when you move diagonally, you are changing both, elect you're looking at a combination of electronegativity and size. So you're changing two variables. So watch out is my best advice. Be very careful when you look at diagonal trends. Now there are people who will say, oh yes, well, when you move diagonally, the size trend is more important than electronegativity. Perhaps uh, it is and perhaps it's not, but just be careful. To purely look at these periodic trends, you need to either move only horizontally or only vertically. So in our example for electronegativity, we looked at carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and we looked at that electronegativity trend. We could have just as easily, and be a little weird, but we look, could have looked at germanium, arsenic, selenium, and bromine. Okay, that would be an uncommon trend to look at because we tend to operate in the second row. But that is completely possible. Again, when we looked at the size trend, we only looked at staying within one column and we looked at fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So when you invoke these periodic table trends, only invoke them if you have just, um, you're moving in only one direction on the periodic table. Otherwise, um, it can get a little messy.